Hey everybody, it's your favorite reconstructionist, Eric Brown of Phil Rally, and welcome to episode number 26 of the one and only show, bringing you tips and tricks to working vehicle collision cases from the best experts in the industry every Wednesday. Today's topic is ask questions. So grab your expert angle coffee mug and settle in at three, two, one, off we go. Every year, traffic crashes claim the lives of over a million people and account for over $500 billion of injuries around the world. A small select group of people from police to attorneys to expert investigators are tasked with getting justice for the victims, protecting the rights of involved parties, and ensuring the story is told accurately and honestly. Unfortunately, we believe that is an impossible task without the right team of experts. If you agree, then keep on listening for actionable tips from leading experts across various industries that you can start taking today to elevate your professional game. If you disagree, then tune in anyway and let us convince you with our ideas. We are Eric Brown and Phil Rally, and this is Crash Tech, The Expert Angle. Welcome back to the show, guys. Crash Tech, The Expert Angle podcast is brought to you by Crash Tech Reconstruction Services. If you have an accident that you need answers for or you think the other side has it wrong, Crash Tech can help. Connect with us at www.crashtechreconstruction.com to submit your case for a free review. So Phil, man, today I wanted to talk about something that sort of happened this week. And it was it was something uh, that came up and you thought I was going to be mad about it, right? Because you have a habit of, I, I always call it second guessing yourself, but it's it's really not. It's you ensuring accuracy. Right. And there's so much in this field, in the whole reconstruction field, there's so much to do. And there's so many different ways that you can accomplish things. And there's so much information. And so really what I wanted to talk about today is ask questions. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I think I think people's pride sometimes get in the way and we're afraid to ask questions. I agree. You know, or we take it as a bad thing. Right. Well, they take it as a sign of weakness or someone would construe them as not being um, effective or not knowing what they're doing. You know, word travels fast, all that kind of garbage. Um, And and I disagree. I mean, you know, uh, you know me and I have no problem reaching out, even though, even if it's just confirmation, I know I'm right, but something in my gut is saying, hmm, are you, you know, and even though I'm confident in in my findings or my opinion or not really my opinion, but my findings or my uh, interpretation of something, I'm going to go find the source. I'm going to go find the source if, if it means going back to the trainer of all the trainers out there. Yeah. Well, and that's so that's what I thought was kind of funny, because, you know, we think back and, and, and you know, when we had talked the other day and, and you're like, man, you're going to be mad at me. And I'm like, oh, God. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty much always mad at you. So, you know, what's <laughs> what's new? Like, you know, but uh, but beyond that. And then when you told me, you know, and you're like, hey, I reached out to so and so. And this is, you know, this is what I learned. But every time you've done that, it's it's interesting because I, I have found two things. One, you were always right to begin with. And two, you learned a new way to verify your original findings. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like the yeah. case in point, and the one that I always think of was your motorcycle crash that you yeah. worked like 35 different ways. <laughs> right? I mean, <laughs> same answer. <laughs> right. I mean, like, you know, and, and that one was, it was very, I thought it was very straightforward. So I'm like, dude, you've got it. You're right. You know, and you're like, well, but let me reach out to this guy and let me call this motorcycle expert and let me buy this book and let me do this and let me do that. And you kept going and kept going. And then you're like, well, this new approach, it just validated my original numbers. And I'm like, cool. And you're like, but I'm going to call this guy. And then, you know, that guy's like, well, yeah, it validates your original numbers. And you're like, well, there's a third way, but I'm going to try this fourth way. And, and yeah. you know, so it, it's not a bad thing. I think we need to get past the stigma of asking questions. Well, in, in, in going back to, um, man, years and years and years ago, we had a, 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 a T-shirt for Crash Tech, and it said um, the, the seekers of the truth yeah. or something to that effect, the, you know, the wording on it. And, and, and that's exactly what that is, you know, as frustrated sometimes as you get with me on that. But, but isn't that what we're doing? You know, it's not that we don't know what we're doing or we don't feel 
confident. It's we're seeking the truth. So am I missing something or did I miss, you know, a single washer in an, in, in an assembly that had 50,000 washers in it? Right. Um, because if you're missing that one washer, if it comes out that you are missing that one washer, what is the trickle down effect of that? You know, yeah. how does that cascade across your whole investigation? Well, in case in point, and I'm glad you brought this up because uh, I, I don't know. Have, have you I'm watched? <laughs> no, no, no. That's, have you watched uh, Ford versus Ferrari yet? Yes. I that, love that movie. Yeah. So it, it like that just reminded me of the scene where, you know, the Ferraris take off and Matt Damon, who's playing Carol Shelby, for those of you that haven't seen the movie, has a has a washer in his pocket and he throws it over into the pit lane where the Ferrari just left from and Ferrari like freaks out and they call the Ferrari back into the pit because they're like, and they're all running around screaming. They're like spare parts, spare part. (laughs) And uh, nobody can figure out where the washer came from. So they call the Ferrari back in, which allowed, you know, the Fords to to get a couple extra laps. So, (laughs) you know, but that's exactly it is, is that one washer, you know what I mean? Could be, (laughs) Right. <laughs> the the piece that, that breaks the camel's back. So, yeah. And, and it's just that, you know, you're seeking the truth. Now, I think personally, I think we have a due diligence in the industry, industry wide to seek out the truth. And when you when you're doing things so many different ways and you're still coming up with the same finding, that's great. But does it hurt to reach out to a third or fourth party individual or individuals yeah. who know nothing about the investigation you're doing whatsoever. Right. They have no vested interest. N- not at all. Right. And, and, and they just simply look at the data inputs, the approach and what numbers did they come up with? And when that, I don't, I don't know how you have a better checks and balances right. on, you know, at that point you are already a hundred percent confident that you found the truth and that just supports your, your finding that, yeah, I did find that truth. So, yeah. and you know, you know, really what I started to equate it to, because, you know, obviously, yeah, you know, sometimes I do get irritated uh, <laughs> that you question yourself and I'm like, just stop it. You're like, you're always, you're always right. So just stop it. And, uh, but at the end of the day though, really what that equates to and what I always think of is like, think about how many times you've done, and and we do it this in this order on purpose, right? That we always work our speeds, work our time and distance. And then when we're done, then we open the CDR data that we image from a vehicle. Yeah. Right. And we use it as a confirmation of our yeah. momentum and our time and distance and everything else. We never open it first, right? Because then it's cheating. Then you run the risk of subconsciously trying to make your data fit what you had recorded instead of using that as a checks and balance, like you said. So, but think about all the times and we've had this conversation before where I'm like, when, when we don't have any electronic data from the vehicles, how confident you are in your numbers now, because every time you've done momentum and then you open your CDR data, it's always been spot on. Well, and I mean, I guess to clarify just a little bit, I mean, we, I do open the CDR data when I image to make sure the data well, is yeah, there. to make sure you got a download. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, you know, I hate to walk away from a car and be like, ah, I gotta go back. Go uh, ahead and shred it. <laughs> and then you get back but, and it's but as far as opening it up, printing it out, setting it there while you're doing your other part of your investigation right. and referring back to it, back to it. Okay, it, my numbers aren't lining up. No. I mean they, they are they have to be separate. It, um one should complement or validate the other. And are they gonna come up exactly the same? They better not. Mm-hmm. Um because, you know, in, in the re- when you're doing your hand math um, for, for you and I, I mean, you know, you and I and we know a few other reconstructions that actually do our math by hand yep. um, versus just throwing it into a math program and calculating it out. Our numbers are going to be different because most of your CDRs and, and whatnot or EDRs are going to either give you whole numbers or tenths. They're not going to go, you know, five, five places past the decimal. Yeah. You know, um, rounding and truncating and all that. So th- if the numbers come back, if your EDR has a 52.9, oh, my gosh, my momentum came back 52.9. Mm. <laughs> right. Uh, well, I'm a little, and, little skeptical about that. And, <laughs> and, and the other thing, too, on that is, I mean, think about that. I mean, you know, when, when we do our hand math, we range everything. Yes. So typically it's like we're on both sides of the of the speed recorded in the CDR yeah. data. Yep, you know, but. Yeah. So like we might be 40 to 45, 
you know, and then the CDR shows 42.5 or 43 or, or whatever. Right. So, right. yeah, you know, but that's kind of what I equate it to. And so for all of you guys that are listening to this and, we're, and you're afraid to ask questions, right? And this goes for the attorneys too, okay? If you guys have a case, and, and most of you are really, really good about this. Most of the attorneys that, that I talk to, when you guys have questions, you ask. You guys ask other attorneys, you call and you ask us, um, you ask. And that's great. I encourage you to keep doing that. And I encourage you to even just, just run it by, you know, and we've talked about this before, like we never charge for an initial opinion or to answer a quick question. And so I love when an attorney calls and they're like, Hey, can you just look at this? Like, okay. look at this. I'm not going to tell you who I, who I have. I'm not going to tell you who I represent. Just look at it and tell me your initial thoughts of, of who you think is at fault for this crash or whatever. Right. Like, whatever I question. love that. That's my favorite way to do it because that way, you know what I mean? They know that I'm just giving them a truthful opinion. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but for the other part of our listening audience, one police officers are really bad about asking really, really bad about asking. And even more so than once you get some training behind you and you start going up, think about, uh, uh there, uh, we're not going to name drop, but there is a certain law enforcement entity that we come in contact with quite a bit that refuses to ask questions. Hmm. You know, and yeah. and you and it comes across. Yep, it's right because I said it's right. Yeah, right, exactly. And so you know, stop, stop being so proud, and yeah. just you know what I mean. And just call and ask. I mean, anybody will help you out. You know, every time we've made a phone call, I've never had another expert who are busy. Um, you know, think about TJ that we've had on the show. You know, I mean. Yeah. He goes to like Australia and all sorts of stuff. And I called him the other day, just asked a quick question. I was like, hey, man, let me just pick your brain real quick. Uh, you know, bounce this idea off you. What do you think? You know, yeah. and he's like, oh, yeah, man, what do you got? What, you know, and, and took the time to sit down and talk. Well, and it, and it comes down to it, not just in reconstruction uh, or, or engineering or um, and on the legal side, you know, attorneys, doctors. It doesn't matter what the profession is. There is no one person that is the end all be all about whatever that subject matter is, where there is nobody on the face of the planet that might or does know more than they do. It just doesn't happen. So you've got to know, number one, know yourself, but number two, know what your limitations are. Mm -hmm. I am 100% confident to this point. And then yeah. I get 99, 98, 97, 98, you know, or 96 and so on. And, and as soon as you get to whatever your threshold level is to where you pick up that phone it doesn't make you less of an expert in whatever field it is it actually in my opinion makes you a better expert because yeah. you are smart enough to recognize it's beyond you a little bit or you're questioning yourself a little bit and you're going to seek out the person that fills that gap yeah and they're either going to get you back on track if you're veering or they're going to continue pushing you down the path you're going because you're correct I do like to push you down a lot. <laughs> Flight of stairs don't count, Eric. <laughs> Everything, anything that you could possibly fall down and hurt yourself on. Just yeah. Pow. For yeah. those that are listening, I will not walk down a flight of stairs ahead of Eric. Ever. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> Nowhere. So, but no, and that's, you know, but think, you know, and you, you think about it, you know, just even us look at, look at just crash tech. Right. And this is why we kind of specifically did this. All of us have our training in, in basic reconstruction. So, you know, we've all gone through all that. We, we all are good at forensic mapping. We're all good with all this, you know, all that jazz. But, you know, I stayed the course of going to the advanced motorcycle schools to learn, you know, motorcycle impacts, motorcycle reconstruction, braking, vehicle inspection, stuff like that. You've always been really big into commercial trucks because that's really what you've done. You know, we've got Chris who loves human factors, pedestrian crashes, bicycle crashes, and he's gone to the advanced recon stuff for that. And, you know, I think that's great because I think a lot of times people, and, and we've talked about this in your, in the stay in your lane uh, podcast, but I think a lot of times guys try to be everything. Well, and I think you touched on it and it didn't really click when you said it until now, because that's when I actually started paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's how it is. That's fine. Whatever. <laughs> when, when every single one of us that went through reconstruction class and training, every one of us knows that you are given 
40 to 60 percent of a, a, a motorcycle, 40 to 60 percent pedestrian, 40, 60 percent commercial, so on and so on and so on and so on. The only thing you're really given 100 percent training is is the fundamentals because every one of those specialized units has that in it, the fundamentals. Yeah. You get 100% of that. You just don't get 100% of all the others unless you take that. Well, the problem is, is because people get 60% of something and and haven't seeked out that other 40% in additional training, they feel like they should, they, they know enough and they feel like they should know enough to be able to, to, to answer the questions that are being asked. When in all reality, I think that's when you need to step up and say, hmm, it, it's beyond 60, you know, yeah. whatever. Well, and I think that's where we see 1.5 second PRT problem. Yeah. Because yeah. you're right. That's, that's kind of the fundamental basic that they teach in recon, right? right. Up 1.5 second, yeah. you, you know, and, and to me, that's how, when I read a recon report that I'm like, this guy's never had advanced training ever in human factors. Typically, could I be wrong? I could be wrong. You know what I mean? But typically that's just when I see it, just blanket used especially like if you're dealing with both vehicles and you use 1.5 seconds for both vehicles, right? Like that's a red flag, you know, yeah. or like with motorcycles, you know, when, when I see guys that are using vehicle drag factors for a motorcycle, mm -hmm. you know, stuff like that, that's a, that's a huge red flag for me. And I'm sure, you know, when you look at commercial truck crashes and you see guys not taking into account, you know, the air brake lag time or the, the the adjustment for drag factors on commercial truck tires especially then even on steer axles because steer axles yeah. on trucks shouldn't lock right ever and, that's and bad if you, you know that and, and if you get and, for those of you that don't know lock steer axles on a semi that's bad and that's bad yeah it's almost like <laughs> it, it, like locking up a motorcycle front tire um but and also like if you have an inspection report where you've got a a, a brake chamber that it's not functioning at all if you're just using a 0.55 to 0.70, you're 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 assigning 100% functionality to that brake. Yep, and it's not working. So you're right. I mean, it's stuff like that. Um, again, it comes back to pride. I think all of us in any kind of specialized um, job, whatever that may be, um, we have a tendency to be too proud and believe that if we reach out for help or reach out for um, guidance or just a second opinion, that word's going to travel so fast that before you know it, your phone stops ringing because you had to ask somebody for a second opinion. Yep. Or you ask somebody, you know, maybe a competitor, hey, take a look at this and see what you think. Yeah. You know, that, that means you don't know what you're doing. I, I I don't, I don't know why we ever, or how we ever got to that point. Maybe it's human nature. I don't know. Yep. Uh, you know, and that's, and it's funny you just brought that up because, you know, in when I know that we're not on the same cases or if it's just a general question, um, I think we have a great relationship with a lot of our competitors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I, I mean, I, I've called them and asked for help on, on many things or just like, Hey, let me pick your brain. You guys do this differently. Why? Yeah. You know, and stuff like that, because one, I, I want to learn. And, and I think the day that you're done learning, the day that you can't be taught anything else is the Time day you need to stop. retire. Yeah. yeah. Time you, to you know? And so like, I guess that's kind of the way I look at it. And like I said, don't be afraid and don't be afraid of that stigma because let's look at like the most, the, the people who have pretty much the most schooling that that's available here in the U S I would say arguably probably like doctors or like your rocket engineers and stuff like that, right? And all this stuff. Well, doctors do medical consults all the time. Yeah. And, and they're specialists. You know what I mean? Like if you go, have you ever been to your family doctor and, and they've ever had 100% of the answers 100% of the time? Or have they ever been like, you know what? Let's send you to a specialist. Yeah. You know, otherwise there wouldn't be as many doctors out there. You know, you go to your right. family doctor and he can do your heart transplant and your brain surgery all in the same visit. Right. Yeah. You know, reconnect your nerve endings and everything else and you're, yeah. you're good to go. Right. Yeah. You know, and, and likewise, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure NASA has more than one engineer building rockets. I hope so. 
I mean, maybe not. Like I know they've <laughs> they've cut back on their budget. Yeah. <laughs> you know? But uh, but they at their heyday, more. when when we had money, when we had money in the bank accounts, I'm pretty sure NASA had at least two. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, I mean, just throwing that out there. So, you know, don't don't be afraid to ask questions. And that's something I need to get better with. Not not necessarily. I, I love to ask questions, um, but for don't giving you a hard. <laughs> what's that? Yeah. So you just don't like the answers. <laughs> well, I just ask you the question and hang up the phone. <laughs> so, but no, you know, it's I do like to bust your balls about it. And, and I need to, I, you know, that's something I need to get better at is, is to stop because it's, uh, you know, I, I don't want you to ever stop asking questions because you're like, oh, I don't, I don't want Eric to find out. No, yeah, I'll keep doing it. I figure if I'm making you mad every day, I'm doing my job. Right. Exactly. Yeah. You're spending your money. <laughs> right. If I'm not yelling at you, then I'm, I'm not happy with you. So it's, you know, but yeah, no, so I, I, I think that's what makes us better and I'm not saying we meaning you and I, I'm saying industry wide. When, when we, any industry, um, bounce ideas, thoughts, I, you know, uh, whatever, work together, collaborate on a, on a study or, Hey, we're going to go out and slide some tires. You know, you have any interest in, in, in going with us? You know, maybe they might be bringing something to it. Hey, we're actually been dealing with a lot of this. Can, what about if we do this? that's what we need to do. The fact that we ultimately someday may end up on opposite sides of an, of a, a, an event. Well, it just is what it is. Yeah. Um, you know, it doesn't mean that you, you, uh, you can't learn something from each other and, and just put the pride aside. You know, what are we doing at your job, at your job, you know, your office or your office. I mean, we're all should be doing the same thing, seeking the truth. Right. Exactly. You know, and spin doctoring seeking the truth. Right. And and so, you know, on that too, and, and like you said, I mean, you know, don't be afraid to, to talk to other people and stuff like that because, and I would take that one step further. Don't be afraid if, if you've been doing this for forever, because me and you are, are relatively, I don't want to say we're new to the industry. I mean, we've been doing this for a decade now, which is crazy. Um, you know, but for the most part, reconstruction, most of, most of the other guys are a, a little grayer. I'm getting a few white hairs in my beard. Like this one, I actually named Phil. This one, I named Chris. This is Eric and Spencer, you know, and, uh, but, uh, you know, but so we bring in Spencer and he's, he's pretty new to crash tech. He's, he's pretty new to the whole reconstruction field. He's just now starting his process to go do his actar and everything else. So how easy would it be to dismiss any really of his opinions? You know what I mean? And, and I think that's the problem that we have is, is as we get more seasoned and more experienced, you're like, who's this new guy? Like, shh, dude, you don't know anything. Just shut up, keep your ears open and learn how we do things. And he walks in. So we started typing up a recon report the other day. And uh, so typing it up and, and he threw something out there and questioned something in the report. Well, what's your number one instinct for any of you guys, lawyers, right? If you guys have been there and you've been a lawyer for 20 years, and you get somebody fresh out of law school, like I'm talking weeks out of law school, and they came in and questioned <laughs> why you were doing something in a brief or something like that, right? I think a lot of you, and I'm not saying all of you, I know a lot of great attorneys that, that would be open to that, but I think everybody's natural reaction at first is like, you know what I mean? And you kind of get, you get defensive a little bit. And, uh, but he made a great argument, and I'm not gonna tell you what he found, but it has actually caused us to update our reports. So he has actually, he has changed the wording in our reconstruction reports because it's better than what I had. Well, and you think about not just in, in, in the fields that we're operating in, think about, go back to your, your teenage days working in, you know, high school job or summer job or whatever. And, and there was always that guy or girl that would be like, what do you know? You've been here how long a month? I've been here 15 years. Right. So, I mean, it, it, it's been that I, to some degree, I do think it's human nature. Yeah. The assumption is because you've been doing this for 20 years that anybody with less than 20 years of experience, they don't know what they're doing or they don't have a different vision mm -hmm. or view or opinion. And if they do, it's automatically wrong. Yeah. Right. You know, but at some at one point, this industry was started out when some guy was probably 
you know, and I'm going to go out on a limb. I don't know this to be accurate, but somebody was probably sitting on the toilet somewhere and they're like, you know what? I bet if two cars smashed together, I could quantify that amount of momentum in would equal momentum out. Right. I mean, like, you know, and he probably got done and called up his buddy or whatever, ran next door and told his friend. And they're like, ah, dude, that's never been done before. I don't know that that could, you know what I mean? Like, and so we're met with that a lot. And, and me and you have had these conversations of like, like, you know, man, that's, that's never been done. And it's like, well, at one point, none of this was ever done. Right. So somebody, somebody listening to this podcast, one of you listening right now, that's a reconstructionist. I'm telling you, one of you is going to come up with something new, a new way of doing something, a new idea that's never been thought of. Right. I mean, somebody has to. Right. Why isn't it you? Right. You know, now I'm not saying just run out there blindly and, you know, start blanket applying, like maybe do some research, then conduct experiments and then publish well, a paper, get it peer reviewed. But, you know, <laughs> instead of, you know, well, maybe instead of saying, why isn't it you? Why couldn't it be you? Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, and me and you have talked about this a lot. And, I, you know, I don't want to share the subject of our test matter, but uh, involving some of the rental car companies. Mm hmm you know, of some research that we want to do that really, I mean, we've looked everywhere and, and I've never found it. You've never found it. Yep. But why can't we be the people to test it? Right. You know, so, uh, you know, and, and we've had Bob on Sabidlo, same thing, you know, I mean, look at him. He went out, did his pedestrian study and, and it turned out great. Yeah. Yep. So don't be afraid to ask questions and, and if you're the guy being asked questions to, I don't, is that worded right? I don't think I worded that right. If you're the, re the guy receiving the phone calls, receiving the questions, um, don't, don't just dismiss them. And, and I don't think, I can't think of anybody that would. I would hope not. I, don't, I, I haven't had anybody that has been like, really? You don't know that? You know, I haven't had anybody say anything like that. Yeah, uh, I've got some off the wall responses where it's like, whoo, probably should have called them maybe earlier in a day because they might be a little bit too far into that box. But um, yeah, but uh, no, I, everybody has always been real open to to uh, exploring the, the topic of conversation. And actually, it ends up going off the rails and develops into a whole new thought process. Yep. Uh, so it's well, always I mean fun. You know, and, and I mean, we've called people that have authored these books and, and questioned them on why they wrote something or, or how they came up with it or the research or the methods. And guys, I'm telling you, we have never come across an author yet who wasn't happy to talk about their work. Yeah. You know, yeah. Now, I'm not saying by all means, like I'm not saying, hey, so I hope, I hope like Jeff doesn't come back on here and strangle me to death, you know, or something like that because his phone's going to blow up. They're going to be like, Eric said to call you. <laughs> like, that's I, can, I can hear it now. I'll get that call at eight o'clock tomorrow is going to be the. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I'm not saying to like blow these guys up. Right. But I'm just saying, I mean, if you truly need something, don't be afraid to ask. Don't yeah. be intimidated, especially if you're new into this industry. Everybody's approachable except for me. Um, but, uh, but Phil's approachable. I'm just kidding. I'm approachable. <laughs> um, but you know, I mean, anybody out here will help you out. If you're an attorney ask because yeah. anybody in this industry will help you out. I think, uh, for the most part, you know, if you're an insurance adjuster, ask mm -hmm. if you're yeah. a police officer, check with your chain of command and then ask. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, been, I mean, there's been a number of times where your phone rang and someone's like, Hey, this is what I got. I, I really don't, I, I just got to ask, does this make sense? And that yeah. was the only time I've ever talked to that person. Yeah. Never talked to him again. But you know what though? The cool thing too, though, that also happens is you form some great friendships. Sometimes you do, you know, and, and the nice thing is, is that as you guys get more and more comfortable with this and you know, your network and who specializes in what it helps because as you type a recon report, you know, if, if I need to, to quote case law or something like that, right. Or, or like, for instance, like, let's just throw it out there. Like a, a, a CDA, you know, if I'm like, crap, I, I know that there's the four elements for a sure clear distance that I need to be able to hit. Where can I go to get those? You know, I, dude, I have a list of attorneys that I could call and be like, Hey, do you have case law for the four elements of a sure clear distance? And they would send it to me. They'd be like, yep, absolutely. Let me get that to you. Yeah. You yeah. know? So no, it and it comes Who, down to just, I mean, it's networking. There's nothing wrong with networking. Yeah. You know? Think I about it. You know, you had, 
one of the one of the best tire guys in the world call you asked you for a favor you're not even a tire guy and you did you couldn't answer it but you knew who to go to and uh at, at one of the manufacturing plants and get exactly what he needed mm-hmm. yeah. so you know i i just i wanted to get that out there just because it, it, you know me and you having that conversation earlier this week just made me think of it and i'm like we need as an industry to work together all of us, because whether you're the, an expert, whether you're an attorney, either plaintiffs or defense, whether you're a prosecutor, whether you're an insurance adjuster, whether you're a police officer, here's the thing. These people that have been involved in crashes have just experienced probably one of the most traumatic events that they will ever experience in their life, right? And I think we as an industry owe it to them to find the truth. Yeah. Of what happened. Yep. You know, so, you know, the, if we can work together and we can help, then we grow as an industry and we just kind of constantly get better. We do so get rid yep. of your pride yep. and just ask, I don't know. Final thoughts. What do you got? <laughs> I was trying to come up with a corny phrase at the end or something. Catch line. Mine was inspirational. I think I'm going to have to put in some inspirational music for that little speech that I just had. Do you like the skit from Saturday Night Live with Stuart Smalley? <laughs> you're good enough. You're smart enough. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Thank God right. people like you. <laughs> yeah. And then I think on the video episode of this, I'm going to have to do like a slow cinematic fade towards my face or something. I don't know. Some yeah, it's just kind of one of those things, you know, if, if you're going to travel across the country, it's going to, you're going to cross more than one bridge. You can't get across the country in one bridge. So, um, you know, don't be, don't, we're all out here. We should be out here to help each other. We should be out here as a resource for others. Um, those maybe that are new to the game and, and, and those that are tenured and seasoned out here, that, that's what we should be doing. We should be out there helping the people that are coming up, um, helping to train our replacements down the road. Eventually we're all going to retire. Um, and we should be there to support each other, you know, yeah. um, and, and good things come from that. I mean, there's a lot of collaboration that could that could that could come from it that may change, like you said, may change something that's been done a certain way for for decades. Yeah. So you yeah. know, and that's so. My final thought that I want to kind of leave everybody with comes from somebody that's really really smart. I've already um, said my piece. Arguably, one of the the best teachers in the universe, uh, Master Again, Yoda. Me. What? <laughs> I said, again, me. <laughs> no, no, no. Master Yoda from Star Wars, right? In, in the new Star Wars movie, he said, you know, he's like, that's the burden of all teachers, that eventually one day you'll live to see your students outgrow you, you know? And that should be, like, that should be the way it is. So if you're listening to this podcast, just like, just like Phil said, reach out to the new, the new people that are coming up and help them out. And, you know, maybe are you giving them the tools to be better than you? Yeah, I hope so. I hope everybody that I help out, I hope everybody that's coming into this industry, if I help them out, that one day they are, will be better than me because that means the industry is going in the right direction. Mm-hmm. You know? So absolutely. I don't know. That's my final thought. Don't be afraid to ask and don't be afraid to help. Yep. And don't be afraid to be wrong. I'm afraid to be wrong. You better be afraid to be wrong. <laughs> just saying <laughs> well because if you're not you know if you're not wrong if you're never wrong then you'll never learn anything new that's true yeah don't be wrong on your final report <laughs> <laughs> but on the you know but yeah i see where you're going with that right uh, just uh, to clarify phil's not giving you guys a report that's wrong <laughs> I'm just i'm just throwing that out there that's not what he's saying uh. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say, you gotta throw the disclaimer out there. I don't want somebody to be like, "Well, I'm not, I'm not calling this Phil character." Yeah, that guy <laughs> don't know anything, <laughs> right? So yeah, it's not what he said. It's you know, but no, I, I, I know where you're going with that. But yeah. anyway, um, there you go. So guys, have an amazing rest of your Wednesday. Have a yep. great day out there. And, you know, we've got more exciting shows coming up. Um, can't wait to get to some of this stuff. Um, you yeah, know, some of the guests coming up. I mean, we've had great guests on. Um, look forward to having some more great, great, great guests, great conversations. Yeah. And that's it. And it all has come from asking, except for who you asked for help this week. And then I go, did you ask him to be on the podcast? And you're like, oh, 
I did end up asking him. Right. But I'm like, you already had him on the phone. Why wouldn't you ask right then? We were, we were engaged in important conversation. I'm going to, I'm going to make since, since now we have video episodes, FYI guys, if you didn't know, we have video episodes available on our YouTube channel. You can go on YouTube, search us um, and watch our, watch your favorite video episodes, but I'm going to make a sock puppet that looks like Phil. So I can mock you on the camera. God, I hate you. <laughs> so, there you go, guys. Have a great rest of your Have Wednesday. Week. We will catch you guys next week right back here on The Expert Angle. Have a good one, guys. Well, everyone, that's going to wrap it up for the day. As always, jump over to Facebook and make sure you follow and join Crash Tech, the Expert Angle group. Also, if you want to leave us feedback, have an idea for a show, or would like to be on a future show, head over to Crash Tech Expert angle.podbean.com and click the link on the right that says contact the show. The form will come up, put anything that you want right in there. If you want more information on expert consulting services or training, visit us online at www.crashtechreconstruction.com. And finally, if you're a PI attorney, make sure you request to join the crash site Facebook group. Or if you're a defense attorney, make sure you request to join the crash site defense Facebook group. Neither site contains any ads or spam. It's just a private community that brings experts from all different areas together with attorneys to collaborate or ask questions. So again, guys, thanks for tuning in. And remember, always leave your accident victims better off than you found them because at the end of the day, everything we're doing is for them. <laughs>